I, I grew up in Mexico City. I was actually born in El Paso, Texas. I, I came here to study a, my bachelor's and my master's at Northeastern University. And I started the company while I was in my last year of, of the university. And I started the company Part Runner because I noticed a gap in the market that wasn't being fulfilled. So in the, in the big and bulky sector, which is essentially non-uniform heavyweight items, specifically in the construction space, there wasn't an on-demand solution to it. It wasn't like the Uber Eats or the Grubhubs of the world. And I started Part Runner because a, I wanted to bring a solution into the space that where it allowed both suppliers, which are the sellers of these parts and materials, and contractors move, move these products on demand. I started the company with two co-founders, both Dan and Tarun, which I met in college. And it was, it was really interesting how it all started because we had met, we, we did an MVP, and essentially what Partrunner became, or what Partrunner is, is a last mile logistics solution that's changing how deliveries are done in the big and bulky space. We work not only with construction companies, but with trade companies and any type of supplier moving bigger and bulkier items. Similar to like a restaurant being able to move a, you know, their food to the end consumer, in our case, we're helping companies move products of different sizes and weights to their end customers as well. Just we have a focus on big and bulky, and we decided to start within the construction and trade space first. I think as an entrepreneur, you're always challenged in every, in every aspect of the business, right? Whether it's uh, defining your uh, go-to-market strategy, uh, implementing a new process when it comes to either pricing or, you know, in, in, our, in a marketplace like Part Runner, we're consistently working with both drivers and filling that side of the marketplace with clients, right, that, that have a need to move stuff. So one of the, one of the challenges that we've encountered is how do we get more drivers into the platform, right? And as a, you know, as a startup and you know, you have to be resourceful, you gotta be scrappy, we've definitely iterated many types of processes to get drivers into the platform. Essentially, it's a combination of between bonuses and engagement and different types of campaigns that we can do with drivers to get them initially onboarded into the platform and then continuously engage with them so, so they're in the platform, right? And, and they're in the marketplace. And then once they're in the marketplace, give them enough deliveries to stay active. In addition, like as a, as a, as a growing startup, hiring is all, has always been one of the challenges that we keep on, on solving, right? It's essentially who wants to join a startup? Like why would they join a startup? How can we incentivize a person and bring them into the team, right? It's a, it's a fast paced environment, but there's, it's, it's also an exciting place to be in. One of the things that has always inspired me is just seeing other entrepreneurs start their own ideas and the whole process that it goes from ideate a solution to an MVP to actually being live in the marketplace. And the concept of building something from scratch always motivated me. Like I think I've been an entrepreneur for, for all my life and I like challenges. I like to work with other entrepreneurs as well and, and people that are consistently solving problems. So it's, it's supposed to be people and then just impacting as many people or as many businesses as you can from like day one, right? And seeing that progress and seeing that growth through time. A piece of advice that really stuck with me and it was being in a startup is like being a little kid and entering a candy shop. And as a little kid, you get like so excited. You see different, you know, candies that you want to reach into. And, and, um, and essentially, you really have to stay focused, right? All about the startup is staying focused. And I think that's the one advice that I received and I would pass to other entrepreneurs. I, I guess I would, I would mention two things. The first one is be hyper-focused in what you're doing. And although, you know, like a kid in a candy shop where you enter the shop and you want to reach out to this candy and that candy and that candy, you really have to stay like focused. And although there might be many opportunities on the table, 
really stay true to what you want to do. And the second thing is, I think at a startup you gotta be resourceful. You gotta be resourceful. You gotta be resourceful. You gotta be you gotta be scrappy, right? And you gotta have to take decisions with you know like 60, 70 percent of the information that you have. You talk about it with the team, and then and on to the next one, on to the next one, and onward. And when I think about where I see Part Runner in three to five years, I think of a company that can have a multinational presence. We're not only operating in Mexico City, but we're operating through New England and soon to expand into other places. And I could definitely see Part Runner being operational in multi-region, multi-market within the U.S., as well as in Mexico City and other places in Latin America. Soon, we're, we're going to go after a Series A. And we're getting strategic VCs to really partner with us and build the next phase of last mile logistics in the big and bulky. I've worked extensively with Gesmer, both with Justin and Steve, on different matters. So with Justin, we worked on all sorts of legal issues. And they were the lead in both the convertible notes rounds that we did, as well as the series seed that we raised with Semex Ventures. And He's always been instrumental in terms of just general advice, uh, legally speaking, and then uh, also as, as business related to Part Runner. With Steve, um, it's been always an ongoing relationship of like key introductions. I, I love the events that Gesmer puts together where you get to meet other service professionals and other entrepreneurs. I think as a professional, uh, both legal and the business perspective, you know, the, just the consistent conversations, introductions, solving problems, both at a business capacity, in terms of like, what's the strategy be, behind fundraising, right? Or what are the legal next steps that we have to do as an entity and as we grow? I go, go with Gazimer because it's the type of company that can go with you throughout your journey, right? As a very young startup to a, maybe a little bit bigger company right throughout your journey of your first maybe raise maybe you're doing a friends and family round or a convertible no to maybe a more formal seed round to maybe a more formal series a series b it's a company that not only helps with the legal aspect of things but also with many just business related challenges on your day to day Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like more information, you can check us out on social media or on our website at gesmer.com.